In this section, we're going to learn about how to calculate underallocated or overallocated overhead and how to dispose of that underallocated or overallocated amount. Take a minute and pause this video, read the example that's given, and try to calculate what is FedCorp's predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. The first thing you need to look for is what is their allocation base? That is, what's their cost driver? The very first sentence says that FedCorp allocates manufacturing overhead based on direct labor hours. So that is their allocation base. The next thing is to apply your predetermined manufacturing overhead rate formula. If you remember, the formula says predetermined manufacturing overhead rate is equal to total estimated manufacturing overhead cost divided by total estimated allocation base. You know allocation base is direct labor hours, so go ahead and do your calculation. Estimated manufacturing overhead is $200,000. Your estimated direct labor uh, hours for the year is 10000 Therefore, your predetermined manufacturing overhead rate is $20 per direct labor hour. Let's continue this example. Be sure to again pause the video so you can read the question and then we'll continue from there. Here they're asking how much manufacturing overhead as was allocated to all of FedCorp's jobs during the year. You remember that how much manufacturing overhead allocated our formula is predetermined manufacturing overhead rate multiplied by the actual amount of allocation base used. We know that in this case our allocation base is direct labor hours. So what we're looking for here is how many actual direct labor hours we worked during the year because that whatever amount of direct labor hours were used would have been all spent on the, all the jobs that were occurring during the year. We see that a total of 11,000 direct labor hours were worked. You know that your predetermined overhead rate is $20 an hour, so your allocation manufacturing overhead allocated would have been 11,000 times 20. A total of $220,000 of manufacturing overhead was allocated during the year. Now take a look at the question and check and see how much actual manufacturing overhead was incurred during the year. We allocated 220,000 but we actually incurred only 190,000 off manufacturing overhead. Now let's take a look at what we have to do if actual manufacturing overhead does not equal allocated manufacturing overhead. It's not a matter of if, it's actually when because rarely will you ever find actual overhead equaling what you have allocated. We're going to continue the same example for FedCorp that we talked about. So continuing with that example, we know that FedCorp's actual overhead was 190000 so their actual amount that they incurred for utilities, salaries, all that was 190000 Based on our estimates, which we prepared the year before, and using our actual allocation base, we allocated 220000 of overhead to all our jobs. There is a 30000 difference. The difference is that we had a target was 190,000 so we should have allocated only 190,000 but we allocated more than that because we were using estimates we allocated 220,000 so since we allocated more than the actual amount we say that manufacturing overhead was over allocated to jobs by $30,000 the reason we say it was over allocated is because our allocated amount is more than our actual amount. If it was opposite where our allocated amount was less than actual, we would have said we under allocated our manufacturing overhead. So typically you will have a situation where you will have under allocated or over allocated overhead. In this case we had an over allocated overhead which means our jobs are overcosted. Remember, what the reason we allocate manufacturing overhead is to figure out our total cost of job. If we over allocated, which means we put too much manufacturing overhead into our jobs, that means we overcosted our jobs. So if it's over allocated, our jobs have been overcosted. We had too much overhead allocated to jobs and we have too much expenses in our jobs. 
the opposite is true if we under allocated overhead. If we under allocated overhead, we didn't allocate enough manufacturing overhead to jobs, and we say that our jobs have been under costed, so we have too little expense in our jobs. Why and how do we get a situation where we have under allocated or over allocated manufacturing overhead? Well, if you think about it, what do we use to allocate manufacturing overhead? Our predetermined manuf predetermined manufacturing overhead is a formula which use estimates. We use estimate manufacturing overhead costs divided by estimated allocation base, estimated total allocation base. So if our estimated manufacturing overhead costs were higher or lower than actual, we could have a under allocated or over allocated situation. Same thing goes if our denominator, which is the allocation base, was more or less than the actual, we would have a situation of under allocated, over allocated overhead. So almost every time you will always have an over allocated or under allocated overhead. What do we do with it? What we do is we adjust the over allocated or under allocated amount to cost of goods sold so it all evens out in the end. So how do we treat the under allocated or over allocated manufacturing overhead? We write it off to cost of goods sold. So we adjust it to cost of goods sold. In the next section, we're going to take a look at what, what we do with our journal entries so you know how to adjust cost of goods sold. All this time, we've only been looking at manufacturing costs. How do manufacturers treat non-manufacturing costs? Well, for internal decision making, management will want to know the total cost of the product across the value chain. So they need to be able to attach all the costs incurred in the other elements of the value chain to find a total cost of product so they can add a markup to cover those costs and sell the product at a profit. So in, to figure out the selling price, they will need to make sure that they take into account the total cost of the product across the value chain. However, the manufacturing cost is the only one that we treat as our inventoryable product cost. So for inventory or product cost, only three elements go into it, which is your direct materials, manufacturing overhead, and direct labor. So direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead are the only three things that can be added to the inventoryable product cost. These product costs are treated as assets in your balance sheet until they're sold. When they're sold, they are transferred to your income statement and expensed as cost of goods sold.